it's good to see you again on this particular broadcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we want to invite you to share your testimonies uh, on how the Word is blessing you. And, and again, uh, contact me at uh, Pastor Moss at bellsouth.net. And uh, you can go to livingwordchurch.faith uh, and uh, give us a good report and testimony how these messages are blessing you. Uh, we invite you to join us at Living Word Church, located at 185 Tunis Road in McDonough, Georgia. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30. And also our office number is 770-957-9872. 770-957-9872. Amen. I'm going to continue uh, on the subject, part five, on uh, touching the plan of God through prayer. Uh, the book of Acts now, of course, I'm speaking from last uh, uh, service to this one on um, being filled with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That means to reconsider, think differently, and be baptized. Be baptized into the body that's being born again. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. That's how you, get, when you get back, why does it say being baptized in the body? That's actually being born again because it says, the rest of it says, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins and you shall receive the... Now, notice, after you get baptized into the body, after you ask Jesus to come to your heart, you are born again. And then, after you're born again, what happens? You shall, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That goes on, talks about the, this promise in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 14. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto him, them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them and they might, uh, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet... He was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were only born again. They were only saved. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Notice what it says in Acts 10, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out of the gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Who got glorified? Who magnified God? Those that spoke in other tongues. Notice in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that after Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, He said unto him, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you've been saved? Have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid hands, his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Amen. So much, so many scriptures. Notice Acts chapter 4, and verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Remember, I quoted 1 Corinthians 14, 2. Let me read it. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. 
albeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries, or he speaketh divine secrets. Now, there's benefits of being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is, is another avenue to touch the plan of God through prayer. For we read that uh, sometimes you don't know how you pray, you should pray. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, give us some insight into it. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself, by the way, the Holy Spirit is not an it, it's a him. Maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, let me just kind of take time with it. Let me read this again. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us. If you do a study on that, it says the Spirit himself holds a conference with the Father. When you are praying, when you're not praying the Holy Ghost, we don't know what we're praying. But the Holy Spirit holding a conference with the Father about what you're praying for. With groanings which cannot be uttered. You are expressing something that is too deep to be said with words. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit or knows what is the plan of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, sometimes we don't know how we should pray, but we have a helper inside of us. We need a helper. It's like, let's just, uh, as a helper, he helps us to pray. Let's just say that uh, you have a, a, a grand, baby grand piano. And you need to move that baby grand piano to the other side of the platform. But that piano is too heavy. You just can't move it. So you get four or five other guys. You, you don't want to roll it. You want to carry it. And you get four or five other guys. They go over there. And all of you gather around the piano. And you, and you pick it up. And you carry it to the other side. They're there to help you. You're not doing it. They're helping you carry that piano to the other side. Well, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that He helps us. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession, holds a conference with the Father with groanings which cannot be uttered. You are expressing something that is too deep to be said with words. And he that searcheth the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. See, through prayer we can stand in the gap for others. Through prayer we can stand in the gap for others. You know, not only praying in tongues, and I want to encourage you to go through all the scriptures I gave you, study them out. Ask God to reveal the revelation to you. And I guarantee you too will be blessed. You know, um, everything we do is by faith. Let, let me say this. I, I was raised in a church. that um, didn't quite understand how to receive this precious gift. Um, they would uh, come and lay hands on you. You say, I want to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit speaking of the tongues. And uh, then they will come lay hands on you. And, and my goodness, one's on one side saying, let it go, speak it out. And... And uh, 
I, I, was, I was a young man. I, I wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard about it. I heard about it. I, I wanted to receive. And I went down front. And I thought you had to go down Terry. And they all gathered around me. Oh my goodness, it scared me. It scared me. One is one put their hands on one side and just begin to shake you and, and grab you and say, say this and say that and say this and say that and and uh, and I'm not responding because it was mo it, it, it was a mass confusion. It was a mass confusion. And, and uh, one said, yeah, just say this, say say bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I mean, just saying all these kinds of things to to, to and it's just I, I'm I'm not getting nowhere. I just I'm a young kid, but you know I just it just didn't feel right. And I can tell the pastor of the church was kind of get irritated with me because I wouldn't respond. And I, I would never forget this as long as I live. I'm a young kid. In the midst of people praying, he bent over and whispered in my ear. And nobody could hear except me. He said, what are you, Baptist? First of all, that was out of order. What he did, he downed the Baptist. You don't talk about the Baptist. You don't do that. You don't criticize no denomination. And when he said that, what are you, Baptist? It upset me. So he told this guy, he said, go with him on the front row and kneel and pray with him. So I went and knelt down. I went and knelt down. The other guy knelt down beside me. Wanted to coach me into receiving. And and I, I'm telling you right now, now this is this is kind of crazy, but I'm telling you. He said, "Say this with me." I started repeating what he says. Kana, the Kana, 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 Kana. I mean, just some crazy things. Say this. So I was repeating everything he said. He jumped up. He got the Holy Ghost. He got the Holy Ghost. And I, I, I had no, I had not received the gift of the Holy Ghost no more than I just landed on Mars. It's crazy. And I grew up as a teenager. I never did. I never did receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They didn't know how to, I didn't know how to get filled. All oh, but thank God. I found what the scripture says. If you then, being evil, knowing or natural, you knowing how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And then I got a hold of Mark eleven twenty four through Brother Hagen. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. Well, I know the Holy Ghost is not a thing, but I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I will never forget this. When my wife and, got, uh, uh, when my wife and I got married, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost after that, because by that time I learned how to receive it. So this is how, so this is how I pray. So simple. I pray this so simple. She was out someplace. Uh, went out on an errand, and I'm at, uh, I'm at the house by myself. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to be filled with the Spirit today. So I said, Father, you said in your word. See, remember, he said, put me in remembrance. I said, Father, you said in your word, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. So it works with healing, it works with finances, anything. Faith works. Everything you do is by faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And without faith it's impossible to get your prayers answered. Unless it's by His grace, His mercy. I said, Father, I believe right now, according to your word, I believe I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking other tongues, and I thank you. Now, let me ask you a question. 
what is my true evidence that I have been filled with the Holy Spirit? The evidence of the Word of God. That's the evidence, the inward evidence. There is an outward evidence. So, I, Father, I believe that I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking of the tongues. And what did I do? After I believe I received, the Bible says I shall have. I, don't, I hadn't spoken tongues yet, but I believe I received when I prayed like I did to got salvation. So I lifted my hands up. I said, Father, I want to praise you right now. I want to praise you right now. I believe that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray. I got so caught up in praising Him. I said, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father God. I am now Spirit-filled. I am now Spirit-filled. I thank you, Father, that I just got so caught up in praising Him, thanking Him because I believe I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father God, because you said, if I ask, I shall receive. So I, I begin to praise Him. It wasn't long after that. The same thing happened to me as it did with Mother Davis I've talked about. That Methodist lady never heard of the Holy Ghost. She was so caught up in praising God, she got filled. I was so caught up. I knew how to receive. I was so caught up in praising God. All at once, the churning right out of my belly. As John seven thirty seven says, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. So therefore, after I praised him, after I praised him for a while, then I began by myself in my living room, began to praise God in other tongues. I got spirit filled with the spirit. And that's when I went to work the next day and told this guy, this uh, Dave, guy named Dave, I shared that. I got filled with the Holy Ghost last night. So blessed. He said, that's of the devil. He said, well, I said, if that's of the devil, then how come I'm so happy? I want to read my Bible more. I want to go to church more. But see, I've experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I do believe in this experience. Amen. Now, in the Bible, most, if you read the book of Acts, now let's go ahead and go to something else. If you read the book of Acts, uh, most prayers prayed in the book of Acts is united prayers. It's people coming together united. As a matter of fact, there in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 14, these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplications with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brethren. They all continue with one another in prayer. Something about being together in a group of people to pray. The book of Acts chapter 4, verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is within. They all heard that they lifted their voice to God in one accord. Amen. You know, prayer should be when God looks down on earth, he sees a mirror which reflects his word back to him. See, when you go to God in prayer, even by yourself, God loves for you to remind Him of His Word. Lord, you said in your Word that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, you said in your Word that you took my infirmities and buried my sicknesses. See, you're praying. You're talking to Him. Lord, you said in your Word that you raised me up far above all principalities, powers, might, dominion. Lord, you said in your word that you gave me this authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Lord, you said in your word that you sent your word and healed me, that you said you would restore health unto me and you'll heal me of my wounds. See, when you get full of the word of God, then you can go to God in prayer. See, if you don't know much word, 
when you go to God in prayer, the conversation won't be, you, you pray so much unbelief. If you don't know much word, you go to God and say, God, if it be your will, heal me. I don't go pray that, God, if it be, if it be your will, heal me. No, no, no. He's not willing that any should perish with sickness and disease. He's not willing that any should perish with uh, uh, going to hell. No, 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 no. But when you know how to pray, you learn how to pray. Teach us to pray, Father. Teach us to pray. Don't, he's not saying go pray our Father which is in heaven. No, that's fine. That's good. But pray the prayer. Pray, pray prayers in the Word of God. Go to Ephesians. Pray the Ephesians prayers. But the more words you get, the more you know how to pray. You say, Father. See, you can touch the plan of God through prayer. Go to God with uh, 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 praise. You know, prayer and praise. They go hand in hand. I'm talking about prayer. A man many years ago, he wanted to uh, watch the eagle to see what the eagle would do in the midst of the storm. He said the first thing the eagle did as he was watching this eagle when an approaching storm is coming, this eagle, the first thing he did, he went to the highest branch of a nearby tree. He went to the highest branch, number one, he went to the highest branch of a nearby tree. Number two, he faced the storm. He didn't run from it. He faced the storm. Number three, he lifted up both of his wings. And number four, he waited. And when the storm came in, the wind blew. He flew above the storm. He compared that to you and I. What do you do? Storms of life will come. That's why you need to know the Word of God inside of you. What do you do? When you see a storm rising up, coming towards you, Make sure you're in the tallest branch of a nearby tree. Why? To be established in the Word of God. Be established in the Word of God. Number two, you look the storm right head on. You're established in the Word of God. You look the storm right on. Then number three, you lift up both wings. One wing represents prayer. The other wing represents praise. Praise finishes what prayer has started. And then, not by might, you're patient. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So the eagle is established in the nearby Tree, the highest branch of nearby tree. Number two, he lifts both, both, both of his wings, prayer and praise. Number three, he faced the storm. He's patient. And this is where most people fall out of the tree. They're not patient. You've got to put your trust in God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Fainting is when you lose consciousness. When you lose consciousness, you don't know what's going on. It's like a wedding. Like a, a, the groom, the bride, they're going, they're going to get married all at once. Maybe the groom, he just... He just Faints. He loses consciousness. He don't know what's going on. He's out. He's out. But see, a lot of people, if we don't pray, you'll faint. You'll lose, you'll lose contact of what God is doing. You don't know what God's doing because you haven't been praying. You haven't been spending time with Him. You haven't been spending time with Him, so therefore, you lose contact with what God is saying. Men are always to pray, not to faint. One translation said, it is necessary for people to always pray and never give up. Don't become weary in well-doing Don't and pray and never give up. 
What does it mean to faint? It means to lose heart, give up, become feeble or weak in mind and body, tired, exhausted, and discouraged. If you are, if you lost heart, you give up, you become feeble, weak in mind, body, tired, exhausted, and discouraged. Uh, 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 maybe you become critical, judgmental, and, and could it be you have not been spending time with God? Spend time with God. He'll change your attitude. I have a story of a lady one time was going through a whole, she was a, a, a minister, a uh, minister, of, of the gospel, and, and I guess she'd be going going through a lot, and she just got so I guess weary and well doing, and she said, "Lord, I, I I'm just going to get out of the ministry. I'm just going to retire, just get out of it." And she went to her prayer chamber, and said, "Lord, uh, uh, before uh, before I quit, I, I just want to say, I I, I just want to spend some time with you to say how much how much I thank you for what you have done all those years and." I remember when the doctor said this, you came in, you healed my body. And, and, and during this certain trial in my life, you, you took care of that for me. And she went on and on, began to praise God and, and, and about what, and thank Him for what He's done for her. And, and she got so excited and praising God. She said, Oh, Lord. She said, I'm not going to quit now. No, I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on pursuing you. See what changed her attitude. She went into an atmosphere of praise, begin to thank God, begin to give God praise. Praise is a manifestation of when you pray, when you believe you receive, begin to praise Him. Quit moaning and groaning what you've been going through. Spend time with God and praise Him. Men are always to pray and not faint. Or you could say men are always to give God praise and don't faint. Men are always to give God praise. And don't faint. Amen. See, God, God wants you to uh, be a, a champion in Him. So I want to encourage you to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for ministering to those that's listening to this broadcast. And I speak peace over their life right now. I bind the spirits of discouragement, oppression. Take your hands off of them right now. I loose them. In the name of Jesus, they're free. And Father, I thank you right now. Stir them up right now as they come to you and spend time with you. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor for what you've done during this message. And those that don't know you, come into the heart as they ask you to come into the heart. Teach them how to pray. So Father, I thank you and I give you all the praise for what you have done and what you will do for these people when they come to you in prayer. So thank you again for tuning in. I want you to know that we appreciate you. We love you. God bless you. And you're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. It cannot be defeated. Hey, we'll be looking for you. Come see us in our next service. God bless you. Thank you. And shalom, God bless you. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.